thinking. Right, everybody, I told you that I would show you a skull or two, and here we have one. This is an enormous crocodile skull, and can you see how very big it is? It's, well, it's almost the same length as my arm, if you can believe it. And look at the size of the teeth on this fellow. Let me climb up here and show you. <coughs> so, here are his teeth. That's my baby finger. So that's about the same length as his big tooth there. And you can see, uh, well, very scary creature indeed, not something that you'd want to be caught by. And they, of course, like to eat wildebeest and zebra, and when they're very little, they eat fish, of course. But when they're big like this, then they eat wildebeest, like this, and zebra, I don't have a zebra with me at the moment, and topi and eelant and all sorts of delicious things like that. Well, they're delicious if you're a crocodile. Then we had a question a little bit earlier about how big or how hippo defend themselves well here you can see how a hippo would defend itself look at these enormous teeth here and i said that they were probably about the same length as your forearm well there's my arm sitting next to the tooth of this hippopotamus now i am a fully grown man not a very uh, not a very big fully grown man but a fair size and at, if you're 9 or 10, you'll find that that's about the same length as your forearm. So you can imagine, look how big it is, it's enormous. You can imagine that very few things are going to be brave enough to take on a hippopotamus. You see how very big it is? I think it's really amazing. Oh, it's very heavy as well. So that's the bottom jaw of a hippopotamus. And Taylor, you might think to yourself, well, with the, sorry, Jalen, you might think, what does a hippo eat with big teeth like that? Well, while you look at that, I'll show you that it's got quite interesting teeth. And the teeth are interesting because while it looks like with big teeth like it has, it might eat meat. It doesn't eat meat, you know. These teeth, these big teeth are only for defense. If you look at the teeth here, you can see that it spends a lot of time eating grass. That's what teeth like that are for. You can see them grinding, grinding, grinding the grass away, and that's what those are for. Now let's see if we can't put this on top, and we can see if we can make our hippo yawn, like as many, like many of you know a hippo can do. It's not very easy to make the thing sit right. There we go. All right, so when his jaws are closed like that, as they are almost now. I haven't got it quite straight. There we go. Look at this. Isn't that amazing? Now, Jonah, you too, as I open the hippo's mouth, worried again, perhaps about being swallowed, like Jonah and his whale, um, <laughs> you say, how do you tell the difference between a crocodile and an alligator? Well, if you look at the crocodile here, you will see that it has got what we call a very rounded snout, okay, at the front. An alligator's got a slightly sharper snout. It doesn't have nearly as wide a skull. Now, of course, this is difficult to answer because this is an old crocodile, which means that the skull is wider than it would have been on a young crocodile. So I suppose you might confuse a young crocodile skull for a big alligator skull. But in general, a crocodile is bigger they are heavier and they're actually more dangerous to human beings alligators yes of course they can damage people but the crocodiles eat a lot of human beings in africa every single year and are far more than alligators eat people i think so those are the main differences but they're pretty closely related they're not very far or distantly related from each other at all and they're very heavy you know i mean the, the weight of that crocodile's skull is probably well i would say it's probably pushing about 30 30 pounds or so, and so you can imagine trying to carry that on your back, an enormous thing indeed. Now, Miss Dugan, you want to know, are animals used to people being around them in the wild? Well, Miss Dugan, yes, they are. You've seen that Byron is next to one of the world's most terrifying predators. That, of course, is a lioness, and the lioness doesn't care about Byron at all, and that's not because of Byron, it's because the lioness doesn't see us as a threat, and it also doesn't see us as something to eat. So it just sees us as a sort of passing piece of the world that it doesn't have to worry about. And that's because we spent time with them often from when they were very little. So I'm not sure if you saw the little cubs earlier. I think you did. But those cubs will grow up with cars around them. And so when they're adults, they won't be afraid of cars. And therefore, their youngsters won't be afraid. All righty, that's it from here. We'll put these back on the wall. And while we do that, let's head back to Byron. <laughs>